Hi guys, welcome back to Nick in China. I'm in uh, Gansu province at the moment, just south of Gansu province, an area called Gannan in the town of Xiahe, and this is the Labrang Monastery. Gansu province in the northwest of China is as diverse as they come. Southern Gansu is a region at a high altitude on the eastern edge of the Tibetan Plateau, and we begin our journey here in the monastery town of Xiahe. The old Tibetan Empire was divided into three main regions. The northeastern region, known as Amdo, consisted of modern-day Qinghai province and here in southern Gansu. Today, the region is still dominated by a large number of monasteries. Labrang Monastery is the largest outside of the Tibetan Autonomous Region and is also surrounded by the longest stretch of prayer wheels anywhere in the world. These make up the inner Kora. So there's a walkway that goes all the way around the edge of the monastery. It's three kilometers long and it's um, basically it's, it's called the Kora. It's like a pilgrim walkway, you know, where you walk around um, spinning pr prayer wheels always clockwise in, Tib in Tibetan Buddhism if you are ever in a Tibetan Buddhist temple and you don't want to look like an idiot. So all of the prayer wheels have a mantra written on them and the idea is that when you walk around spinning all the prayer wheels it's the equivalent of reciting that mantra over and over again. There you go. The entire monastery area within the Kora is made up of a variety of buildings, from the monks' quarters, white stupas and the colleges and halls. As well as the monks and tourists, the monastery attracts people from far and wide who come to walk the Kora and pay their respects. So this monastery belongs to the um, Gelug sect of Tibetan Buddhism. That's the Yellow Hat sect. No prizes for guessing why it's called the Yellow Hat sect. Um, and it's one of the six main monasteries of this sect of the religion. Um, most of them are in the Tibetan Autonomous Region and this one here and I think there's a couple in Qinghai province as well. Gelug, the most recently formed sect of Tibetan Buddhism, was founded in the early 1400s by an Amdo region local and its popularity spread quickly throughout Tibetan people. Unlike the earlier sects, often described as the Red Hat sects, the Gelug or Yellow Hat sect follow the teachings of the Dalai Lamas. So the monastery was founded in 1709, which makes it not very old, only a few hundred years old. Um, but it feels, it feels ancient. I can't really explain <laughs> the feeling you get when you're here. I think it's the sounds and the smells as well. Very different from anything I'm used to anyway. Um, fascinating place. It really is fascinating. It's hard to, it's hard to put it into words really because it's so vast as well. I've been basically walking around here for best part of two days and I barely feel like I've scratched the surface to be honest. If you are new to the channel by the way and if you found this interesting or you know you have an interest in China and things like that, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to keep updating as regularly as possible on the channel, so do me a favour, man. Religion and politics were separate entities in Tibetan regions until, in the late 1500s, Altan Khan, a powerful Mongol leader, named the monk Sonam Gyatso as Dalai Lama, the first time the term was used. In return, Altan Khan, who subsequently made Tibetan Buddhism the state religion of the Mongols, was proclaimed the reincarnation of Kublai Khan, the great Mongol leader and founder of China's Yuan dynasty. Following this, throughout the 1570s, the power of the Gelug sect increased, and with the help of a Mongol army, they had secured political control over the Tibetan world by 1642, under the rule of the fifth Dalai Lama. So it is absolutely massive. Basically, I imagine originally this was the whole town. Obviously the town is developed now and there's like a Muslim quarter and like a predominantly Han Chinese quarter as well. But um, 
this was the town. And it's, it is, it's like a little mini city. Um, you know, when you hear monastery or temple, you think it's gonna be like a couple of buildings. Not this place. So basically the, um, the main streets are actually pretty busy with tourists. Um, probably not as busy as it would in a, any other year, but you know, this is 2020. But if you just come off those streets, uh, this is like the monks' living quarters. There's absolutely nobody anywhere. Just the monks and me. A monk just came up to me and started talking to me in pretty fluent English. I could barely speak Chinese. <laughs> Tibetan guy, he said he was just from uh, a little bit down the road in the next county, but he'd been here for 10 years and was probably going to stay here for a lot longer, he said. And he told me that um, right now there are two and a half thousand monks living here. Um, but apparently, at its peak, this place, it was closer to like 4,000. Amazing. It is a truly, truly fascinating place to walk around and get lost. I'm a little bit overwhelmed actually. So it's a place of learning, Lebrang. There's six colleges here um, focused on different things like astronomy and law. And it's famous in the, all of the Tibetan world for, um, for medicine. People come here from far and wide for treatments for various things. The monastery is a fascinating place to explore, especially the smaller back streets. Just to the west of Labrang Monastery is the small Tibetan part of town. There are also some places worth having a look at here, including a Tibetan nunnery and a Nyingma monastery. This is the earliest sect of Tibetan Buddhism. So just across the river, uh, you can't really miss it. There's like a hill with, um, as there's usually people on top of it, so it's quite clear to see. Uh, it acts like a pretty good kind of viewing platform for the whole monastery to get a real idea for the, uh, like the scale of it. It's a pretty, it's, it's not a long walk, but this town is at 3,000 meters above sea level, so even just this little walk of this hill, it does kind of take your breath away a little bit. Um, they say that, you know, if you come to a place like this, anything over 3,000 meters, certainly for the first day or so, you should take things pretty easy because obviously people can suffer from altitude sickness at this this kind of altitude. Um, I think I've been all right to be honest but walking up there I was a bit <gasps> felt like I was going to collapse a bit but apart from that I'm fine. <laughs> All right, so with Lebrang just behind me, I'm gonna say goodbye there. Hope you enjoyed the video, and um, there'll be more videos on the way very shortly. Uh, give that a subscribe if you haven't already, and a like and a share. See you next time. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.